Tara has a free class, or actually she has a one hour webinar that she has taught before. She wants to reteach it. It really is a great introduction for people into her body of work, her point of view, how she thinks about how she does the transformation with her clients. And uh, that way people are, uh, yeah, they understand, ah, okay, this is why you believe this. This is, these are the kind of overall steps. So Tara, you, you've taught it before. You're thinking about putting it as a free thing on your site. And your question is, okay, after people watch this, what should the follow-up be? So, so I wanna actually first challenge whether it should just be a free thing on the site. Let me explain is that, um, first of all, I think, it's, I think there's value to it. I mean, it's one hour long. It's not a sales pitch, right? It's not a, like a lot of free webinars, so-called, are like, it might be one hour long. It's like the person praising themselves, talking about their own credibility for like 20 minutes. And then they have, you know, 20 minutes of content barely. That's really setting up for the 20 minute sales pitch. Yours is not like that. Um, so yours is how much of the one hour is actual teaching that you feel like is adds value to, to them? Yeah, that's a really good, great, great question. So I literally, I probably have like 60 slides. <laughs> um, wow so it really so yeah i mean I, and then, I'm, I'm gonna and say then there's three uh, of them uh -huh. that's like do you want to go like hear some testimonials right. super quick so that's do you want to go deeper and then yeah i did a it's slide interesting like, who i love to work with i always say five percent is completely reasonable for any webinar to sell the next thing five percent ten percent also is is fine uh, 15 okay. to 20%, it goes a little bit more than I'd like, but it's, it's probably okay in some situations. 5% of a one hour webinar would be something like three minutes, five to 10% would be three to six minutes, basically. And you have basically, you know, yeah, three, three out of 60 sides is literally 5%, right? So um, I'm going to say, so first of all, when somebody comes to your website, they don't know your work well yet. Um, are they going to sit through a one hour webinar? I don't think so in most cases, unless they are interested enough to pay for it. What mm -hmm. should they see instead for free? In my opinion, what they should see instead for free is the quickest thing that gets them interested in the next step. Now, ideally, when I say the quickest thing, ideally, there would be some really cool infographic or chart that goes, oh my gosh, wow. In one picture, I don't even have to read a long article or watch a you know 15 minute video. I get it. I get why this woman. I I understand why this my friend told me about this woman. You know, like why why I came across this website. I'm so glad I did. Now even I don't have a cool. I do. I kind of have a graphic like this, but it's so. What I do is because I've been lazy about creating graphics, cool graphics. But I'm saying that because Tara, you actually have created a graphic. I, I have. Yeah, I have. that's why I mentioned that. Okay, so you might, yeah. like yeah. If, I were, if I were your marketing manager, I would say, Tara, that's going to be like the first thing they see when they come to our, come to, maybe, maybe there's a, you know, anyway. Um, I don't want to talk about website structure right now, but basically the, the idea still is the first piece of content they consume, what should it be? If you have a graphic that's cool, that, that goes, makes people go, whoa, that makes a lot of sense. I never thought of it that way. Or wow, this summarizes some of the things I've been learning. This is interesting. Or, okay. you know, that'd be great. Now, for people like me who, are, who have been lazy about creating graphics, the next best thing I can do is my best articles. So mm -hmm. as you know, when you come to my website, um, I will go ahead and say, you know, show you. when you come to my website, um, you know, you, there's really, well, there's one minute video, which gives people a sense of my energy, which I think is a good idea. Um, and, and then they just basically go, what am I interested in? I'm interested in marketing. Okay, great. Okay, top articles. Great. Okay, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to read this. First of all, this is already kind of a confronting idea. Really? I thought I should, that should mm. be so important. Oh, wow. I've seen this sort of good stuff. Here's a secret. Oh, wow. This is interesting. Now, to be honest with you, this this article is a little long. It's not it's not bad. It's not it's not too long actually. To be honest, right? It's it's not so bad. It's, mm -hmm. it's not like a fifteen hundred, two thousand word, three thousand word article like a lot of, like you know, Boy, late yeah. blog posts are. So, okay. So so either like a great image, you know, that's controversial, but 
inviting of the people you're trying to reach or a summary image or a one minute, two minute, three minute video that's really entertaining. Mine's not that entertaining, but at least, you know, a lot of people who come to my website have already heard of me. So that's kind of the people I'm trying to reach. The peop if people haven't heard of you yet who come to your website, then you, that image is a great idea or articles, your best article. And, and so what do you do with that webinar that you, you, you know, that you proudly put together? And I agree, you should be proud of it. Make it into, and thank you, Gregory, in the chat for saying, that's what I would do if I were you. Free to attend paid replay webinar. So in other words, if I were you, I would probably teach the webinar live at least once every three months. If it's something you're like, you know what, this really is a good first step for a lot of people who are who have consumed some of my content. They've they've consumed in or they've heard about me enough, whether through a friend, colleague, or consumed enough of my content where they'd be willing to spend an hour with me. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, but there is there, do I need to can the replay still be evergreen? Of course, I mean, that's, so they, I, th they, I think what you're saying is, but they pay, but for they're it. paying for that. Okay. They're paying for it. Now here's the difference though. Cool. It's I not, they're I'm, not, they're I'm, not paying I'm a lot. They're paying no. $20, $25, $30, $40, $50, yeah. whatever, you know, you feel like is a reasonable first step. Great. And, okay. um, and here's the thing is that there's two other ways you can use it. One way is as you, if you have conversations with somebody on social media, it's, you know, you're chatting in a Facebook group, you take it to a private message or whatever, or you still want to be super generous in a Facebook group. You could, in a comment, say, hey, guys, I typically sell this on my website for $35, right. $45, whatever. But for those of us who are seeing this thread, right. message me and I would be happy to give you the replay free of charge. Mm, like so you it. see what I mean? When it has yeah. a price attached to it, because it should, it actually is. Not valuable. everyone gets it. Yeah. Then you, then you feel real, especially good when you can gift it in certain situations, whether it's a private message or an email with a prospective client say, Hey, people usually pay for this. I'm going to gift it to you. It feels so generous, okay. you know, or in a, in a, in a Facebook group thread or whatever in this, that kind of situation. So that's one way you can use it. The other way you can use it is as a bonus for other people's audiences. Again, it's like, Hey, I'm, I'm introducing Tara to my audience. Hey, people who are, you know, my, my people, Tara usually charges for this. She's been really generous to gift it just to those of you who are here. And you could say, I'm going to gift it to people in your membership community. You know, you, you go to somebody who has a membership community. They have 50 members. Members are paying $50 a month, whatever, whatever. It's like, hey, this is, this is Tara's bonus. It's available for the next seven days for free. So I encourage you to watch it. See what cool. I mean? Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. And um, so would you just put it as a private link on, um, on YouTube and just share the private unlisted. link? Is that how you unlisted? unlisted. Okay. Yeah, not, not, not private, unlisted because... Uh, just to give you all a uh, reminder, when you go to YouTube to upload something, um, youtube.com slash <coughs> upload, you uh, select a file. I'm just going to pretend I'm selecting a file. Um, okay. And then you have the choice of making it. Uh, it oops, where is it? One. Where is it? Where is it? It where might be it? in the. Oh, it might be, in, I'm sorry, it, it, it's in the visibility step. Yeah, in the very last yeah. step. You have a choice of making a private. Don't do that because it's really hard to share it with people. You have to know their exact mm -hmm. email address associated with a YouTube account for them to be able to see it. It's really, it's, it's too much logistics. Unlisted means, hey, just the people with the link <coughs> able to see it. And then finally, public is anyone can find it on search engines and things. So unlisted is the way I do, I do all that. Yeah, yeah, so. Okay. And um, so from there, if someone has purchased it or I have gifted it to somebody, um, then there would be just a follow-up message from. Yeah. Okay. So now let's talk about 
what happens with delivering this and following up. So delivering this, uh, I would set up an email sequence to deliver this. So if, you know, I don't know what, which let's say I, I use MailChimp, but those of you using something different can, can apply this. Um, in MailChimp, you can either use tags or groups. I use groups, tags, doesn't matter. The same idea that can be done on MailChimp and mm -hmm. other software. So you could say, whenever you could create an automation inside your email software, whenever people get placed into this group or get tagged in this way, please send them these this one email or these two or three emails if it's like more than one email please send the second email three days after they've opened the first one or three days after they've been sent the first one you could do fancy automations like that it's not that hard so it's like then you can think it through like okay i want my first email to just be sending them what i promised them like hey thank you for your interest in this webinar i really look forward to seeing you watch it here it is and um, please fill out the feedback form at the end um, if you'd like the bonus. Or actually, it depends. You might have two sequences. One sequence is for people who bought it. If people paid for it, they should get every, all the bonuses just right up front. If people who are getting it as a gift or, or for some other reason, they should fill the feedback form to get additional bonuses, right? The feedback mm -hmm. form, by the way, can have a question saying, what is your level of interest in working one-on-one -on -one with someone? around these issues, right? So, so the feedback form can start to uh, go into the sales process if, if you wish to. Anyway, so the automation, first email, deliver them things, say, please fill the feedback form to get the bonus. And then the second email can be three, five, seven days later to say, um, uh, just wondering how it went. Um, and uh, you can set up the automation such that, um, uh, you know, the automation, well, now we're getting kind of fancy into, I'm like thinking, gosh, if someone fills a feedback form, they shouldn't get the second email. You can do that if you use Zapier to, 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 to stitch together the automation. Anyway, it doesn't matter. If you just want to make it real simple, they get email one on one day one, email two on day five, and email three on day 10, whatever. The second and third emails can be things like, hey, um, did you... Did you try out the technique that I taught in, in the webinar? Or, or, or do you have any questions about it? You know, how is it going, basically? And the third email is um, uh, just final email to, to, you know, to say thank you. Here's the link again. Um, well, something like that. Yeah. And so I'm assuming one of them can be inviting them into a call with me. Sure. The second or third email, uh, the call can also be, you, you can, you probably should also say that at the end of your webinar. Yeah. Yep. I right. have that. Mm -hmm. Right. And then yeah. the feedback form, uh, you can have a question as to, you know, are you, are you ready to work with, uh, are you interested in working with me? And in the Google form, you could do a yes or a no. And if they say yes, they get brought to one section of the, 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 the form. If they say no, they get the form submits or they get brought to another section. So Google form okay. can do an if then kind of, kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. um, and that way you can invite them again to work to, to one-on-one -on -one call with you. And finally the second or third email or both, you can make the mention of that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome.